Hello everyone and welcome to yet another session on what is robotics and how to make a career in it. Do you know friends that it has taken a while for automation and robotics to become more prevalent. And the average annual income for a robotics engineer in India is around 5 LPA. Robotic engineers are in very high demand and they have a tremendous prospects to advance their careers and increase their earnings. Now, before we discuss our today's agenda, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So first, we will discuss about what is robotics. Moving ahead, we will discuss about dimensions of robotics. Then, we will learn about history of robotics. Moving ahead, we will discuss the key components of a robot. Then we will learn about robotics with artificial intelligence. Moving ahead, we will discuss about types of robots. And at the end, we are going to conclude our session with how to make a career in robotics. So let's start with what is robotics. Robotics is a fusion of science, engineering and technology that creates devices referred to as robots that mimic or take the place of human beings in action. Robots have long been a source of fascination in the popular culture. Examples include R2-D2, the Terminator and the Wall-E. These exaggerated anthropomorphic representations of robots frequently seem to be parodies of the genuine thing. By helping the industries deal with the issue like rising productivity and shortage of skilled people that are present in the market today, robots seem to be very helpful. Robots of various kind enhance the processes. But are they more futuristic than we think? The answer to this question is, robots are developing mechanical and intellectual abilities that do not rule out the possibility of an R2-D2-like machine in the future. Now, let's discuss the dimensions of robotics. The first one is electricity. Electricity is used by the robots to power and operate the machines. They have a mechanical design, a form or a shape that is intended to carry out this specific function. That becomes the second part. And the third part or the third dimension is that it includes a type of computer program that chooses what, when and how a robot does a certain task. Now, let's discuss the history of robotics. The first time the word robot appeared in the print was in the late 1920s in a play of Rossum's Universal Robots by the catch author Carol Capic. The drama opens at a factory that creates robots which are artificial people. The American scientist Isaac Asimov, who is Russian descendant, mistakenly invented the term robotics in the late 1940s. Isaac Asimov also put forward his three laws of robotics, to which he later added the zeroth law. Now, we will discuss the laws of robotics. The zeroth law states that a robot is not permitted to hurt humans directly or indirectly by inaction. The first law says that unless it would violate a higher order law, robot cannot hurt a human being or via inaction allow human to come to harm. The second law states that unless a human given instructions clash with a higher order law, a robot should obey the commands that it receives from humans. And the third and the final law states that a robot may define its own survival so long as doing so does not violate a law of higher authority. I hope so you would have got the idea of the laws of robotics. Now let's discuss the key components of robots. The first one are actuators. Actuators are the energy conversion components that are found inside the robots. Actuator's main job is to transform energy into the motion. The next comes the electric motors. Electric motors are the AC-DC electromechanical devices that transform electrical energy into the mechanical energy equivalents. Motors are utilized in robots to provide rotational movement. The next comes sensors. Sensors offer in the movement of knowledge of the job environment. Robots have a tactile sensor that replicates the mechanical characteristics of touch receptors found in human fingerprints and they also include a vision sensor that calculates the depth of environment. The next comes up the controller. 
Controller is a component of a robot that directs all the mechanical system's motion. Through the variety of sensors, it also gets input from the nearby environment. A microprocessor that is connected to the input or output and monitoring device forms a brain of the robot controller. The motion controls mechanism which consists of multiple controllers, actuators and amplifiers, which is activated by the controller upon a recept of a command. And the most important component of a robot is its power battery. The power sources or the power battery are like hydraulic, solar, pneumatic power sources that provides the robot's operating power. Now we will discuss how artificial intelligence has a part to play with the robotics. Basically, the ability of machines or computers to accomplish various jobs continued to rise exponentially with their invention. The power of computer systems has been enhanced by humans in terms of variety of working domains, the growing speed and decreasing size over the time. John McCarthy, the inventor of artificial intelligence, claimed that it was an intelligent machine built by science and engineering particularly an intelligent computer program. It is a technique for creating a software computer-controlled robots or computers that think intelligently, much like highly intelligent people do. Artificial intelligence is applied by researching how the human brain works as well as how make decision, pick up the new skills and work together to solve problems. Then using the findings of this research as a foundation Intelligent systems and software are created. Think about the various fields that go into the artificial intelligence in today's scenario so that the robots like Sophia have come into the existence. Now we will discuss the types of robots. The first category that comes up is the mobile robots. Locomotion is the ability of mobile robots to move from one area to the another. It is an automated machine that can move across the uncontrolled environment without the need of mechanical or electrical guiding aids. There are basically two examples of mobile robots. The first one is the rolling robots. Rolling robots move about on wheels. They are able to search swiftly and easily. However, they are only functional in the level terrain. The next example comes up is the walking robots. Robots with legs can move or walk typically are used in the environments with rocky terrain. Most robots that can walk have at least four legs. Next category of robots comes up as the industrial robots. If I talk about the industrial robots are those robots which continuously complete the same activities without moving. These robots are employed in the fields where repetitive boring operations are necessary and are well suited for the robots. Next comes up the autonomous robots. Robots with autonomy are self-sufficient. They employ a program that gives them the option to choose the course of action based on their environment. With the aid of artificial intelligence, these robots frequently pick up new skills. They begin with a brief routine and modify it to improve their performance of a task. As a result, the most effective routine will be used again. And finally, the last one, but not the least, is the remote control robots. Robots that are controlled remotely are utilized to complete difficult and ambiguous jobs that autonomous robots are unable to complete owing to the operational uncertainty. The greatest people for complex tasks are those with true brain power. As a result, a remote control can be used to control a robot without physically being present at a work location a human can undertake dangerous tasks through the remote control operations. Now we will discuss how to make a career in robotics. The first option is to enroll in a robotics engineering program. Only a few official programs are available to train students for career in robotics engineering because it is a relatively new subject of study. Nevertheless, there are numerous alternate routes into the field so that you can select the one that is best for you. It is also crucial to have a strong foundation in these courses 
because robotics engineering is a difficult field built on sophisticated engineering, computer science and mathematical ideas. And college degree with concentration in computer science, engineering or mathematics is frequently the initial step towards a career in robotics. You can prepare for the coding elements of work by studying computer science and you can also prepare for developing a robot's hardware by studying mechanical engineering. For instance, boot camps are a fantastic method to launch or change your profession because they are concentrated on helping you build specialized abilities and get ready for this field of employment. Many hard skills that are applicable to robotics engineering will be taught in a boot camp that focuses on coding or data analytics for instance, in addition to providing networking opportunities and career services. Robotic engineers in particular might benefit from the coding boot camps because they need to be proficient in number of coding languages in order to succeed or even execute their jobs well. Boot camps often tout the advantages of a flexible schedule and online instruction which let you have a full-time or a part-time job while you are in school. The next step is gain the required skills. I advise you learning C++ and if you have the opportunity Fortran as a programming language it will help you a lot. It will help with the learning to program not necessarily useful as it is primarily gonna help you in the robotics course a lot. Python for example is also an excellent language for prototyping and it's also simple to learn. Learning programming via artificial intelligence and machine learning is really beneficial. Then you can learn about the mechanical and the electrical systems including how motors function and I'm sure you'll also study about edge bridges, transducers, potentiometers, photoresistors and other things in electronics and instrumentation engineering. But if that does not make you feel at ease, make sure to complete projects to make sure that you understand. And after that, you can also try several excellent simulation programs such as Gazebo or VREP. Then you can also study about dynamic systems. Studying dynamic system will support and confirm your early assumptions about the dynamic systems. You can use this to determine the motor specifications you require. So after studying dynamic systems, you can also make your own simple robots and work on the robotics projects. So for instance, you can make a walking robot using an accelerometer for self balancing and build a line following robot with the Arduino or create your own small AI with Alexa and Raspberry Pi to automate jobs or recall or search specific data. So while doing your projects, you will get the main benefit to able to recognize your ignorance of where you are lacking and you will also start to learn again. And additionally, if you work in the manufacturing, take advantage of any opportunities you may have to learn about CNC, 3D printing or etc. You will get the knowledge on how to design for manufacturing which is a very practical skill. Now after you have done your projects, you can also try to conduct some research. Then you should specifically conduct your own research on robotics to determine the type of work which you are interested in doing. So you have to figure out by asking a question to yourself that are you interested for software or manufacturing, design or artificial intelligence. Simply don't be hesitant to try the new things out. Now we will discuss about roles and responsibilities of a robotics engineer. Robotics engineers are in charge of developing, testing and constructing robots that are both affordable to buy and maintain as well as to be productive, safe and to operate. These engineers carry out their duties using computer-aided design, drawing and also computer-aided manufacturing. Engineers also specialize in robotics to research, create robot systems and look into strategies for producing them cheaply. Then each application specific requirement must be ascertained by a robotics engineer who must then customize the robot to meet those needs. Automation system engineers is another name for the robotics engineer who work for robots manufacturers. These engineers put robotic system 
to specific purpose on an assembly line for the production. And finally, a robotic engineer has to create, set up or test robots or a robotic software. Now we will discuss the designation. So if you have completed your program in the robotics, then you might be designated as an automation engineer or as an automation engineering manager after your experience. Then you can also work as autonomous vehicle design engineer or a simple design engineer. With your experience, you can become either engineering manager, engineering vice president or a factory automation engineer. If you are a postdoc student, you can work as a research engineer or a robotic systems engineer. I hope so. This would have clarified your role's responsibility and how to make a career in robotics. That was all for today's session. I hope so you enjoyed our today's session on what is robotics and how to make a career in it.